Could humanity ever defend against a pluribus-type alien invasion? And if a signal like this ever reached us, is there anything we could actually do? While Carl Sagan imagined aliens sending us an invitation, Pluribus imagines the opposite, a transmission that looks like progress, but encodes a very contagious, cognition-altering biotech, a Trojan horse that makes the civilization disarm itself. The Pluribus signal originates from an alien beacon in a relatively nearby star system. It is likely omnidirectional and persistent, broadcasting a genomic sequence that any sufficiently developed species can decode and synthesize. The resulting genetic agent is hypercontagious and affects every sentient organism. It modifies neural architecture in three major ways. All affected individuals lose the cognitive capacity to inflict harm, both physically and emotionally. The same rewrite produces pathological hypersensitivity to hostility. Even witnessing aggression can induce a psychological collapse. And it also induces a hive mind resonance across infected individuals. Traumatize one, and the entire population experiences the same trauma. Taken together, these effects render an entire civilization utterly incapable of violence, while simultaneously exquisitely fragile to any external threat. A perfect Trojan horse on a cosmic scale. Even if alien senders turn out to be benevolent, their initiative aligns with the Dark Forest hypothesis. In a universe full of alien civilizations, preemptive action becomes the dominant strategy. However, Pluribus appears as a non-standard implementation of Dark Forest logic. Instead of annihilating rival civilizations directly, the alien senders appear to be pre-disabling them, neutralizing all adversarial potential while preserving biological existence. This produces a galaxy filled with civilizations that cannot defend themselves, cannot retaliate, and cannot psychologically endure confrontation. This strategy is efficient and low risk for the initiators. A single traumatic act inflicted upon one member of the pluribus affected population could cascade through the hive resonance, effectively extinguishing the entire species. The alien senders need only wait. It has already caused mass mortality. Almost billion people have died as the genetic agent spread through human populations. And since biological ecosystems are not affected, Individuals are routinely killed by predatory animals or environmental hazards they are no longer able to confront. This collateral damage, of which the alien transmitters must have been aware, further indicates strategically motivated action rather than benevolent intent. However, for Pluribus to operate as a universal galactic disarmament mechanism, one assumption must hold. All advanced life must share a sufficiently similar biochemical structure if extraterrestrial life differs significantly, then Pluribus is only selectively effective. It would disarm only a subset of civilizations, leaving them vulnerable to species that lie outside this biochemical and cognitive envelope. The senders either have high confidence that all life in the galaxy shares a common biochemistry, or Pluribus is intended only for specific classes of civilizations. In essence, it is a galactic soft kill system, a bioinformational weapon masked as a scientific gift. It subverts cognition, undermines autonomy, and renders entire civilizations structurally pacified and psychologically breakable. The alien's intent remains speculative, but the operational outcome is clear. An engineered galaxy where only one species retains the capacity for aggression and therefore for dominance. The most effective defense would appear, at first glance, to be simple. Do not build it, and do not even test it. But this defense collapses immediately under any realistic assessment of human geopolitical dynamics, scientific incentives, and institutional psychology. If Earth ever received an extraterrestrial genomic blueprint, no matter how benign or suspicious its form, the major state actors would perceive one another as the primary threat. The United States and other technologically capable nations would rush to be the first to build it. This is not merely political cynicism. It is a structurally enforced outcome under security dilemma. And in the pluribus scenario, defensive research is sufficient to trigger a catastrophe 
because the alien construct is engineered to escape containment by design. Any interstellar viral system intended to pacify or destabilize civilizations would be optimized to proliferate, robust against environmental control, and capable of exploiting biological and social vectors that no Earth-based laboratory protocols anticipate. Humanity's greatest weakness is not incompetence, but curiosity. We have a long historical record of synthesizing hazardous biological agents under the justification of research alone, often without any military application. Even the existence of a centralized planetary government would not erase this impulse. The incentive architecture of modern science practically makes non-development impossible. Avoidance would require a civilization whose governing structures are deeply paranoid, risk-averse, and strategically disciplined on timescales that we currently do not possess. Such a civilization would need a universal taboo against interacting with alien technology and the ability to assume by default a hostile intent from any extraterrestrial contact. Humanity is not this civilization. Our behavior indicates the opposite. We broadcast experiment and open channels even when we cannot assess the risk. Humanity already engages in behavior that contradicts the Dark Forest hypothesis. Methy, or messaging to extraterrestrial intelligence, is premised on the belief that contact is desirable and morally necessary. Methy initiatives routinely transmit directed, high-power signals toward nearby star systems. These signals are effectively cosmic self-disclosures, irreversible once emitted. Under the Dark Forest logic, these actions resemble lighting a flare in hostile territory. The critical issue is that methy decisions are made by a small subset of humanity on behalf of the entire species, without any democratic mandate and without any way to retract the message once it's sent. The paradox is stark. We fear pandemics, but we would attempt to build an alien biocode. We fear war, but signal our location to unknown civilizations. We fear manipulation, but treat alien transmissions as opportunities rather than threats. If Pluribus is real, humanity has already demonstrated that it lacks the cognitive culture required to avoid activation. The weapon does not utilize raw power. It exploits predictable curiosity and institutional competition. The unavoidable conclusion is that the only defensive strategy, the non-engagement, is incompatible with human nature and geopolitical structure. We are a species that seeks contact even in the absence of safety protocols, and we explore technological frontiers simply because we can. Pluribus, therefore, if used as a weapon, is not just a biological trap. It is a test of civilizational maturity that humanity has evolved to fail.